On today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm looking at the radio waves effect in Adobe After Effects. So this is a really handy tool you can use for a variety of different visualizations. It's just a great little locator animation, but you can use it to visualize earthquakes, explosions, blast radius, sonar, radar, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. So I created five different looks and I'm gonna make them available as an After Effects uh, template project file, as well as animation presets. And I've also made these animation presets available in 4K and 1080p because when you apply them in the comp, they're very specific, you know, resolution specific. So if you'd like to get access to those, go check out my Patreon page. The link is available down in the video description. Speaking of Patreon, big shout out to my tier three patrons, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flumi Plus One, Samir Mahdi, and Tyson the Keymaster. Thanks again, folks, for making this video possible. All right, here I am inside of Adobe After Effects. For the first step, I'm gonna create a new composition that I'm gonna call Radio Waves. This is a uh, standard HD 1920 by 1080 with a duration of one minute. And to apply the radio waves effect, I need a solid or a shape layer. So I'm gonna go to new solid, just right clicked right here. And I'm gonna call this once again, radio waves. Make sure it's set to comp size. And the color doesn't really matter because when you apply the effect, it's going to automatically make everything transparent. So don't worry too much about that. You can find the effect under the effects and presets panel under the generate section here. Now I'm gonna grab it and drag it and drop it over my solid. Now you can see it's totally black. And if I toggle transparency, you can see that it is indeed transparent. And now if I play it back, it will automatically animate. And you see, this is what it looks like by default. Now it's not too bad, but this is insanely customizable. There's a ton of different looks you can create. And if you look over here under the effect controls panel, you can see just how many parameters there are. This isn't an in-depth look at this particular effect. I'm just going to show you how you can quickly customize it to get some cool looks. And then I urge you to play around with the tool to uh, maybe develop some different looks for your own particular scenario. Today's video is brought to you by Envato Elements. Now, while it's nice to be able to create elements from scratch, like in this tutorial's example with the radio waves effect, this isn't always exactly the most efficient workflow. Sometimes I need assets quickly and I don't have time to create them. But with the subscription to Envato Elements, you get access to over 56 million assets. I'm constantly using things from Envato Elements in my maps. These include icons, ink transitions, textures, backgrounds, and pretty much anytime I'm looking for something unique or specific, I can always find something available on Envato Elements. They offer a nice and clean, simple lifetime commercial license, which is good even after your subscription ends. Following the link in the video description is going to give you 50% off when you select an annual subscription, which will give you access to everything on the site for under $20 a month. For real, go check it out. Right now we have these blue lines, so let's see what we've got here. Well, we've got a producer point. I'm going to leave that at this in the center. We can adjust that later. There's a render quality here. It goes all the way up to 16. I found that that doesn't make much of a difference here, so I'm going to leave that at 4. The wave type here is polygon. You can actually have it set to like another layer, the, the alpha contours of an image. You can create a mask and have it emanate out in the shape of a mask, which is actually really cool. If you have like, um, if you convert like a, the borders of a country into a mask, you could have it have this cool radio waves effect. Now, if I open up the polygon parameters, you can see there's a number of sides here. So this isn't actually a perfect circle because it's just a bunch of different sides that are making up. This I've added so many sides that it looks like a circle. And you can see as I lower the number of sides, uh, that becomes visible. So this will allow you to achieve different looks if you want to play with the curviness and the curve size you can get you know slightly different looks but i'm going to go ahead and once again go with the default here there's also a little star checkbox if you want to get that type of look now what i've found is that these two parameter groups down here are where i make the majority of adjustments to get different looks so first is wave motion so frequency is going to give you more or less numbers of circles so let's set that to something like 1.5. And expansion is how far out they're gonna go. So if I lower the expansion, I don't want to, I basically don't want it to stay within the parameters of the composition just in case I pre-comp it. I don't wanna have to worry about having to collapse transformations. So to avoid that, I will keep the expansion in the comp boundaries, which I suggest you do the same. 
And now you can see over here, these start to slowly fade out here. And this has to do with lifespan down here. So you can adjust lifespan as well. So if I lower the lifespan, it's gonna make them fade out quicker. If I bring the lifespan up, it's gonna make them fade out less. And once again, that's gonna go outside of the boundaries of my comp. So I wanna keep this a little bit lower. Let's put it at something like eight. That's looking good. Now you have a bunch of different parameters here, orientation, direction, velocity. You can see that changes it in a different direction. Once again, not the looks I'm really going for right now, so I'm not going to mess with these. And they don't really have an effect because I'm dealing with like a perfect circle, so I don't, you know, I'm not doing any of those other polygon shapes, so not really relevant in this case. Now for stroke, there are some cool options here. We have these different profiles here, and to really see what's going on with these, I'm gonna bump up, I'm gonna go back here and change this. I'm going to increase the expansion again, and I'm gonna take the start width here, that's the stroke width, I'm just gonna crank this up. And this is gonna allow us to see what's going on here, like how these profiles are being affected. So first is square, you can see that uh, has to do with the edges of these strokes. You can switch it to triangle, which gives you a different look. You can do sawtooth, which gives you this cool, like um, almost like a sonar or a radar type of look. Sawtooth out or sawtooth in, I actually like this look. You also have Gaussian, Bell, and Sign. So I'm gonna put that to Sawtooth In, and I can change the color here. Let's make it red. And then I'm gonna go back to Frequency. We'll bring that back down to 1.5, and we'll bring the expansion back down to 2.5. And now, check this out, we've got this cool look. However, it's starting to still um, go outside of this. So let's, we can either bring the expansion down or we can bring the lifespan down. I think I'll bring the lifespan down ever so slightly, maybe to like six. Fade in and fade out time definitely changed the look of this animation. So right now the lifespan is set to six seconds. So the fade out time is set to five. So basically it will immediately start to fade out, which is a nice look. So if I bump this up, it's gonna give you more of a, a gradient look. If I bring it down, it makes them all kind of solid. So if I bring fade out time to zero, now they're just gonna kind of pop out. You can see they pop out. Maybe that's a look you want. That's not a look I want. So I'll set the fade out time to five. If I want them to fade in, I can also crank this up and that's gonna fade them in from the middle. Last but not least are the stroke width. You have start and end, so like how wide is it when the animation starts right here, and how wide is it when the animation ends out here. So I crank this stroke width up way too much here, so let's bring it back down to like 45. And for end width, let's bring it all the way down to one. Now let's see what this looks like. Okay, there you go. Now we have a little bit of a visualization here and let's see how it looks on a map. So I'm gonna quickly launch GeoLayers just to give you an example. Let's go over here to the US. I'm gonna create a map comp. You don't have to use GeoLayers. If you have access to another map image, just throw that in here. I'm just gonna grab satellite image. So I'm gonna grab this map comp and I'm gonna go add a tint effect, which is gonna make it black and white. Now I'm gonna grab these radio waves and throw them on top here. And I'll just quickly position them somewhere on the eastern seaboard over here. Now I'll just toggle switches and modes. And for the radio waves layer, I'm going to switch the blend mode to darker color. And that's going to give us this cool look of, uh, you know, blending in with just the countries here. And it's not showing up in the oceans. And very cool. Now, last but not least, I'm going to switch it to 3D. And then I'm going to parent this to the map comp anchor because that's how it works. In geo layers, you could also pin it using this little button here. And, and what's cool about this is I can now change the pitch and the bearing and it's going to stick to the map comp. And I can also zoom in on it.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more content like this, I have a playlist called Monday Maps. You can go check that out. Link in the video description. And if you'd like to see more tutorials in the future like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Once again, if you'd like these project files and the animation presets and a bunch of other cool stuff, go check out my Patreon page. As with everything else, link in the video description. And don't forget to check out Envato Elements as well. Thanks again. See you in the next one.